Hi, welcome to Potentially Genius, where we, Tomorrow Lab, take what is probably a potentially genius idea and turn it into more of a potentially genius thing. It's more of a race against time to see how real we can make something in the shortest amount of time possible. We have a four phase process to do this. We start with discovery, then we go into ideation, followed by prototyping, and then a final presentation to our potential genius. So let's get into it. We are really excited to have Natasha Case with us today. Natasha comes from an amazing ice cream brand called Cool House. We are the biggest women founded and LGBTQ founded and led uh, ice cream brand nationally. Uh, we started with um, ice cream trucks and then um, started distributing uh, to grocery stores, now in about 7,000 doors. What are not the shortcomings of ice cream, but like, what does ice cream need from the world so that I can do its job better? I think the number one thing that's on all of our minds is, you know, the melting issue. Part of what's fun about ice cream is it's, there's an impulse element. You want it, you get it, you gotta eat it because you're, you know, it starts to drip and you're, you know, licking it all up and it's great. Um, but can we make that experience a bit more easily transported? When does it start to no, um, it starts to happen over at 10 and over. It's deliciously edible at 10, so it's starting. You know, like I, I define melting as like a good thing, like you want some, if it's too cold, you're not tasting it. But 10, 15 means you gotta keep eating it because then it's really going only in one direction from there. I think we have a pretty good lay of the land on uh, ice cream challenges. Most of them appear to do with the fact that ice cream is a cold treat and the world is a hot place. Um, which I guess is why ice cream is appealing in the first place. Maybe we can help ice cream do its job better. I think you can, I believe in you guys. Uh, Ted and uh, Jason, you guys were talking about new components. We looked at both like chemical cooling solutions as well as, as electronic and active cooling components. We also have a section of just heat sinks. There's a sensor that we can use. Uh, this is also a kind of an interesting, like really low profile thing. A lot of options technology wise. So I did, did do like a little sketch uh, of an idea, taking this like round Tortilla unit and saying, could that provide some type of like uh, benefit to the ice cream cone? What if we took the hot face facing down, the cold face facing up? So you can kind of keep the cone crispy and warm while putting, keeping the ice cream side cold. Um, and maybe this is like a device that's used for a minute at a time um, while they're serving ice cream in like hot ice cream trucks. I went a little bit deeper down the PCM route. We have a supplier who we've worked with in the past for phase change materials. Our friend Harshal Gupta over at Regis recommended a particular hydrated salt based phase change material. What if we took that stuff and wrapped it around a cone. So this is a cone cooler. It's like a cup or like a thing that you hold on to. Inside that is a small electronic system with a PCM reservoir. By having this blower in the bottom, we get this loop of air that like keeps going over the top of the ice cream cone and mm -hmm. keeps the ice cream from melting. Could you add a lid on now top to even enhance like the, 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 the effect? That would, that would be kind of cool too, because then like I could get an ice cream cone for a friend and then walk 15 blocks and drop it off and it would still be frozen. Yeah, I think this is worth getting into some very like quick prototypes with PCMs and with Peltier junctions to see what we can create in terms of temperature differentials. Jason, you worked on the Peltier junction box. Can you tell us about the prototype and what you learned? Went ahead and purchased mainly two components. One is the Peltier unit, it's a 12 volt bit. And then I got two other temperature and humidity sensors. Um, and then they're hooked up to this Arduino. So I have two cardboard boxes. The bottom side is the cold side and the top one is the warm side. The cold chamber became 18 degrees Celsius. What was the target temperature we were trying to reach for the cold? When frozen, zero degrees. When serving, 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then Julia, uh, do you want to share your results from the phase change material testing? This is what I have now. It's this giant 3D printed uh, 
looks like a very big soda cup. And if you look inside, I have assembled it with the fan on the inside, um, the two 3D printed pieces for the ejection inside as well. Um, and then this is the PCM chamber. It's already frozen. You can kind of see the condensation on the outside and it sits right in the middle and you can put your little ice cream cone in there. Um, fun little pink top as well. So I was running this this morning. Um, I tested and was able to get in the range of like five and a half to nine degrees Celsius. If we could get better airflow around that PCM, um, and we could get air that was closer to that negative two degrees C, um, and we get a better insulating chamber, we might have something that holds the ice cream for longer. The PCM option seems like it is it's, it's the superior path. I think, Jason, uh, um, unless we can get the cooling side under like freezing, or like under 32F, I feel like we just don't really have a, a potentially genius path there. I think let's give ourselves one more week to prototype. I think we're moving along very quickly. And then kind of wherever we are next week, we either present that thing or do like one, you know, tiny updates uh, to present to Natasha. So what's what's new this week? So I've been working on a patch sign, um, kind of updating the previous giant mammoth of a thing that I created last week. Um, and so I only printed the exterior for right now, um, but it looks pretty cool. Well, it is Look a little swirly. Top. Oh, oh it looks like, like a true confection. <laughs> um, so it's very similar, but um, this has a smaller form factor. So hopefully um, people will feel more comfortable using it. They can stick it in the cup holder. Um, and I also made some updates to the CAD that I had instead of a fan like a regular box fan that i was um using in the model last week i'm using a blower this time which is a lot smaller um and has a more directed airflow um so with this blower it's positioned at the bottom um it blows the air sideways and we've decided to direct it in a spiral up the external of the um of the pcm chamber also, this um, this design from the last design has gotten rid of the eject button, which I thought was particularly fun. So that's a little unfortunate, but um, it does mean that we can slim down the profile of it a little bit. Um, it's not as bulky. So I think the trade-off is worth it, but. Would you worry at all about the ice cream cone dripping on the fan? Yes, I have worried about that a lot. Um, what if bump up the bottom perimeter of it so it doesn't drop into the fan, but outside. And then there can be like a reservoir holding those melted ice cream or just water droplets. That's a really good idea. I think I'll play around with that um, before I print this. All right, here we have iteration two of our prototype. This time we spent a lot more time thinking about design, making it something that somebody can actually use so it fits inside of a standard cup holder. We also wanted to make the top something fun, so we created this swirly shape and printed it in a see-through 3D printing material. Um, not totally transparent, but definitely more fun than the last one. Inside, you can see that there's also this circular spiral going all the way down. This was done in an effort to increase the time that the air spends exposed to the PCM. So if the airflow is going around the spiral all the way up top, then it will travel around that PCM chamber. Hopefully there will be some heat exchange between the PCM chamber and the air around it, and it will get even colder by the time it reaches the top and has time to cool down the ice cream. So another thing you might notice in this design is that this gap on the outside I filled with foam. This is our insulator for this iteration. So this is a lot more <laughs> aesthetically pleasing than the first iteration. Um, it's a little bit thicker and is also built into the design. So let's see how this works and if we can get lower temperatures than our previous design. So this has now been running for a little bit and we're only getting a reading of about seven points. 7.2. I'm going to wait for it to go down a little bit more, but it kind of has steadied out already, so I'm kind of thinking it's not going to go down further than this. Hey, welcome back, Natasha. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Great. We've been super busy over the last few weeks uh, cooking up something cold for you. 
but uh, ice cream can keep you very busy. That's the story of my life. Well, we're really excited to show you the progress we've made so far. And uh, I'd like to hand it over to Julia, who's uh, been working on a pretty clutch prototype. And she and Jason have uh, been able to document some great results for you. So after speaking with you last time, we thought of two separate avenues to go down to try to tackle this problem. And the first um, Jason's gonna talk about with a Peltier unit. The first prototype for the EE side, it's a ice cream cup delivery box, which is essentially made out of this cardboard box. What we had imagined was there could be a cold side and a hot side, using the hot side to warm up the crispy waffle cone and the cold to mm. your, your cold uh, cone colder longer. Uh, but I think after prototyping this, the cold side was way more effective and we would just create a, a portable box for your delivery crew to be able to use that. Jason took more of an electrical approach and then Kevin and I focused on more of the mechanical side because that's what we specialize in. So the idea that we came up with was using a phase change material or the material that you use in ice packs or anything that you put in your freezer. That type of material, freezing it as some sort of frozen battery and then blowing air over it so that as much heat transfer as possible takes place. And we essentially create a bubble where the ice cream can sit in really cold air. Those two things together created our idea on the right, which is a sketch that Pepin drew early on. Um, and I developed our prototypes from there. So this was our first iteration. Here you can see that it is a large chamber. The ice cream cone sits in the middle. The light blue is a piece of PCM is a chamber, so we fill that with PCM and freeze it, and then that sits on the inside of our chamber. And at the very bottom, you have a downward pointing fan, and that draws the air from right around the cone and brings it up all the way around. And as the air passes over the PCM, that heat transfer will take place. There will be a lot of water that condenses on the outside, but then by the time that the air reaches the top where the lid is and where the top of the ice cream is, um, it should have cooled down significantly. The cone is sort of protected with insulation, but where it's exposed there is where the coldest air is, as you're considering. That's yeah. correct. And then the other benefit of like a closed system while you're storing it is that at first the PCM and the cold contact will draw the moisture out of the air but eventually you'll have what is essentially cryo chilled air, which will be dry. Now, as soon as you open it, things get possibly a little sweatier. Definitely the humidity is the enemy of ice cream. So this was the next CAD iteration that I did of it. Um, we put a little swirl on the lid so that it was a lot more fun. I will mention that one thing that we did miss here and one of my favorite parts from the previous design was um, this ejector pin at the bottom. This was to push your ice cream out when you wanted to eat it. And I thought that was really fun, but ultimately it seemed like the trade-off was worth it to make it more user-friendly um, and smaller than to have an ejector pin. But the last thing that I will mention is that at the bottom, we also tried to implement a drip catching mechanism. We figured that if the ice cream was melting and was dripping, it would get in the fan and make everything sticky and messy. And we would not want that. When I prototyped this one, um, it came out looking a lot nicer, um, but I did test it and we didn't get as good results as the last time. This time we only achieved about nine degrees Celsius, whereas last time we were in the four to five range. I think it's mainly due to the type of fan that we use. And I also think it's due um, to the spiral mechanism that we tried to implement, as well as the size of the PCM. We didn't use as much phase change material in this one, so if it's just sitting out on the counter, it doesn't last for as long. This is not a genius idea yet. I think it's potentially a genius idea. It's getting there, um, but those are definitely some of the considerations that I would improve on in the future if, if we were going to make it a genius idea. This feels like, oh, I can just grab this and I this is my this is my tool for eating ice cream. So I I, I do like that. So would you say this is potentially genius or? <laughs> Genes, genes. <laughs> they all have potential. I do really like the using the hot and the cold um, and how that, you know, the, the smell of waffle cones or cookies just makes the ice cream even more like delectable. So I think that's a bit more on the genius front. And, th and this last one, I do really like um, that very kind of simple problem of just wanting something that isn't going to require a lot else, you know, that you can just enjoy ice cream in. Um, and can consume it more slowly without all the milk. I do have positive feelings from from all of them. So I, I appreciate all the thinking and all the, the creativity that went in all three. This is the kind of thing I would love to do too, right? Where it's like you, you build some beautiful 
uh, ice cream coolers and people get them as part of their experience with you guys. Once you can kind of make it work, then there's a whole other world of the visual and what makes it like as consumer friendly as possible in terms of the other bells and whistles. Thanks, Natasha. Awesome. All right, take care, everyone. Thank you again for having me. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much to our guest. Thanks so much to DigiKey for sponsoring this. Listen, if you guys have potentially genius ideas, not your big idea, but just like a fun idea or something that you wanna see us make, put it in the comments. We're gonna be reading them. We're gonna be looking for likes, upvotes, or whatever you kids call it. And the ones that like get the most traction, we might actually bring onto the show. We'll reach out to you, you get to be a guest, and we'll build the thing that's in your head. That's our job. Also, if you have any thoughts about our process, comments, criticisms, we don't care, tell us down below. Yeah, and if you wanna see more of our work, go over to tomorrow-lab.com uh, or you can find us on Instagram. Thanks again. Bye.